Hello and welcome. I am Sakshi Mandwal and our subject expert today is Radhika Khanna, Assistant Professor in Puducherry University. Today, we will introduce you to the dynamic field of photojournalism. This is an exciting and creative area where we communicate with photographs. In this session, we'll discuss what is photojournalism and the role of photojournalists. What is photojournalism? Photojournalism is a branch of photography where we use images to report a story. You can see how photographs tell a story using a single or few images. They are important whether it is watching a show, news broadcast or reading newspapers or magazines. The images that you use in any instance must be relevant and consistent to what is being reported. As a photojournalist, you just don't take photos of an event. Your photographs can also capture memories and symbolize messages and emotions. You have to understand how powerful images have the ability to not only be informative but to change people's attitudes, ideas and the course of events. So what makes photojournalism different from other branches of photography? It is the humanistic spirit and impact of photojournalism that often takes on a life of its own. It is in the works of dedicated and sensitive photographers from past and present. And it is something you should learn to acquire for yourself as well. What do photojournalists do? Photojournalists are primarily photographers. So why are they called photojournalists and not simply a photographer? It is because as photojournalists, they tell stories with their cameras. Instead of pen, notebook or tape recorders, they use a camera and its accompanying selection of technical devices to record the everyday events. Along with reporters, they play a key role in our society. And like journalists, they also work with a strong sense of journalistic values such as truthfulness, objectivity and fairness. Successful picture taking is a combination of a strong news and visual sense. As a photojournalist, you should know when to take photos. You should be able to use your sense of news judgment to determine if a subject is worth covering and also how to present a fresh or unusual angle to an ordinary event. As a photojournalist, you can use your camera for two things. It is either to illustrate a written story or to tell an entire story with just photographs. Take for example, Olya Morvin. She is a young woman photojournalist from Ukraine. She has narrated her experiences in Ukraine and India through her photos. She lived in Chennai for two years till 2014 and went around India documenting the lives of Katputli in Delhi, the monks in Ladakh, the Chennai Metro and Kovagam Festival in Tamil Nadu. Olia says that to be a good photographer, you have to be patient with the subject and get close to them. Make yourself comfortable with them. She also talks about the prevailing prejudices especially the restraints that she faced in many countries, not just in India, because she was a woman. But it did not stop her from pursuing a career in photojournalism and documentary photography. Being a photojournalist, it is not an easy job. Often you will find yourself working under difficult conditions. But it's worth the effort and risks if your picture can show how it really is. Beginning. Let us now have a brief look at the origin of photojournalism. Around the 1880s, a technology called the halftone was developed by which photographs could be printed in the newspapers. How did the term photojournalism came into being? The combination of photography and journalism or photojournalism is a term coined by Frank Luther Mott, historian and dean of the University of Missouri School of Journalism. It really became familiar after World War II, 1939 to 1945. But historically speaking, 
photojournalism emerged in the late 1920s and can be broadly defined as a spontaneous and topical photographic narrative of human events. Though it is important that the images blend informative content with emotional impact, journalistic value holds pride of place over aesthetic quality. That is, your photographs should be accurately depicting an event than just be looking beautiful. This is because photojournalism has its roots in news delivery. So, as a photojournalist, you should strive to maintain as objective a record as possible. This is the major difference you'll find between photojournalism and artistic photography. In spite of this key way in which photojournalism differs from other photographic arts, it has been accepted as a fine art since the late 1970s. And hence, have many gallery shows and museum exhibitions. The world history of photojournalism has a rich collection of powerful images. Henry Cartier Bresson and Robert Kappa are notable pioneers of modern photojournalism. Robert Kappa was a war photographer and photojournalist who covered five different wars. Bresson's photo behind the Gare St. Lazare has been one of the most celebrated photographs of the 20th century. He is known for his candid shots of powerful moments that seem to suspend time. Examples of other well-known photojournalists include Arko Data, Dayanita Singh, Luz De La Hai, and Chin Chi Chang. Being on the lookout for decisive moments is the hallmark of photojournalists. Having an ever-ready small light camera is all that you require being a photojournalist. And as technology offers smaller, faster, lighter and more memory-packed devices as well as laptops, publishing your photos from remote locations can be almost instantaneous. However, it is being seen that the golden days of big Glossy prints in magazines such as Life, Time, National Geographic and the Illustrated Weekly of the India are over. The field is rapidly changing, leaving upcoming photojournalists like you to explore new ways of interpreting events being published and recognized. Modern Photojournalism Modern photojournalism began in 1925 in Germany. It was the invention of the first 35mm camera, the Leica, that led the way. Leica was designed in a way to use surplus movie film and then shoot in the 35mm format. Earlier, to take a professional quality photo, you would require bulky equipment. But after Leica was invented, photographers could go just about anywhere. The difference was dramatic. Previously, only primarily post photos with people aware of the photographer's presence existed. Now, new photos of people outside the studios or crafted scenarios in their natural postures started coming up. In addition to lightweight cameras, there was another invention from Germany, the photojournalism magazine. It involved the idea of primarily using photographs and not words as a medium to tell a story. As photography evolved from single images to visual essays, the forms and formats of the medium changed as well. The picture magazine evolved from mid-19th to early 20th century. As Stephen Heller would say, it happened from the repository of drawn and engraved facsimiles of isolated daguerreotypes into albums of sequenced photographic images and integrated text designed to capture and guide the eye. The weekly Berliner Illustrated Zeitung, B.I.Z., was one of the most progressive of the early photographic picture magazines. It was witnessed too and captured a huge number of events in the early 20th century. Cut line or captions helped tell the story along with the photos, guiding the reader through the illustrations. The written story was kept to a minimum. The one dominant theme setting photo would be printed larger, while others would help reinforce this theme. Germany's photo magazines established the concept, but Hitler's rise to power in 1933 led to suppression and persecution of most of the editors, who generally fled the country. Many of them came to the United States. They had an influence on the photojournalism that emerged in the United States in magazines like Life and Look.
beginning in India. A year after the daguerreotype and calotype were invented in France and Europe, photography was introduced in India in 1840. The key moment in the history of Indian photography was Lord Curzon's decision that the 1903 Delhi Darbar be covered by a large number of visual journalists. Curzon's invention was to direct the world's attention towards Delhi. The 1903 Darbar was held to commemorate the coronation of King Edward VII and Queen Alexandra as Emperor and Empress of India. The king and queen did not attend but were represented by the Duke of Connaught and the Viceroy Lord Curzon. The Durbar ceremony itself fell on New Year's Day and was followed by days of polo and other sports, dinners, balls, military reviews, bands and exhibitions. Indian photojournalism flourished in the last decade of the British rule. With the introduction of newer and lighter cameras like the Rolleiflex, the Speed Graphic and the Leica and the contacts that allowed photographers to be far more mobile. The rise of the press owned by both Anglo-Indians like the Times of India, the Statesman, as well as nationalists like the Bombay Chronicle, the Leader, the Bande Matra and the Hindustan Times provided a powerful boost to this kind of photography. Photographs of nationalist leaders that had so far been censored by the British government could not be printed for greater public access. Thus emerged iconic photographers like Sunil Jana, T.S. Satyan and Humay Vyarwala amongst many others. Some prominent Indian photojournalists Sunil Jana, who began his career in 1940, is arguably the foremost photographer of his time. He captured an India in transition. His work captured peasant and labour movements, the horrors of partition and the rapid industrialization and urbanization that followed India's independence. Jana's contemporary Homai Vyarwala is regarded as India's first woman photojournalist, whose 10,000 odd photographs document a young India. She began her career in Bombay during the World War II and later shifted base to Delhi around independence recording key political and social events till date, laid down her camera in 1970. Another celebrated photojournalist is Kishore Parekh, 1930 to 1982, who can be regarded as the father of modern Indian photojournalism and is responsible for changing the face of the field. He introduced the idea of the picture story to India. He was influenced by the work of Eugene Smith, Henry Cardio Bresson and Margaret Bork White. Two photographers born in 1942, Raghu and Raghubir Singh, began their respective journeys as photographers in the 60s. While Raghubir Singh is regarded as one of the pioneers of colour photography in the world, Raghu is probably India's most acclaimed photojournalist. His work on the 1984 Bhopal gas tragedy and its aftermath can be regarded as one of the most important documentary projects in India. Another photographer associated with that same tragedy, Pablo Bartholomew, won the World Press Photo of the Year for his photograph of the unknown child being buried after the gas disaster. Photojournalism in Indian Newspapers and Magazines Moving on to the newspapers and magazines in India, it is evident that the media too has had a makeover with different newspapers and magazines publishing photographic essays in the country. The Hindu regularly publishes photo features. Magazines and journals like Motherland, The Caravan, Fountain Inc. and The Sunday Guardian publish photo stories in every edition. photojournalism in Indian e-magazines and websites. To many Indian photojournalists, the internet is a new playground. Gully magazine and Axcar are important e-zines dedicated to showcasing interesting works. These magazines are available online for anybody to access. Gully is a repository of photo series from India. Axcar magazine features compelling narrative photography projects from India and beyond. Bartholomew.tv is the website of Richard and Pablo chronicling an intimate India since the 50s. 
a lot of work being published now is of a younger generation of Indian photojournalists who experiment with a wide range of themes and subjects. Some examples are Swapan Parekh, Altaf Kadri, Ritam Banerjee and Amrit Raj Stephen. New Vistas for Photojournalism in India Nowadays, photojournalists are not restricted to only print media. Digital photography has brought in a photographic revolution in India, as in other parts of the world with the turn of the country. With the help of internet, having visual access to a wide range of images is a cakewalk today. The Delhi Photo Festival, in many ways, it has created a renewed global interest in Indian photography, including photojournalism. This biennial festival, which started in 2011, is an initiative to bring photography into the public space. It creates awareness of photographic arts amongst its many practitioners. Why is photojournalism important? Can you imagine reading a newspaper or magazine without images? How would you react if you had to watch television news, broadcasts that had no videos? they would be incomplete. The power of pictures. A single photo can speak louder than several words. It has the ability to enhance a new story, making it more understandable to the viewer or reader. The images that you take if and when attached to an article should be able to summarize or even add to what has been written. By doing so, newspaper reading and news watching becomes more effective as one can better relate to the news to real life situations. For certain people, photos speak louder than words. When we write in photography, it cuts across the barriers of language and it can be read anywhere in the world. Gives evidence of facts. As a good photojournalist, you should be aware of shooting an event with upholding a level of public trust that is not violated. Therefore, your images should be accurate, timely and visually stimulating so that the help viewers relate with the news being told. They should be able to convey what is happening during a particular moment in time. The most important thing about journalism is that your photographs serve as evidence that these events that you have recorded with your cameras have occurred. They give evidence of facts. It could be for holding governments and armies to account for their actions or it could be to inform the public on injustices playing out in our communities or to freeze time of the defining moments in our history. Reporting current events. Photojournalists are very important in the realm of reporting current events. It supports the statements being made, making the report even more effective. This becomes more and more important as an increasing number of people do not have the time to see or read all of the content that's included. Highlighting the news story. Photojournalists do more than just tell a story. With using a few images, they are able to highlight the most important issues of news. The best photojournalists are able to convey the truth of a news report through a single yet powerful photograph. Good photojournalism has the power to awaken a conscience. Photography can also compel us to confront issues that are potentially distressing and controversial. For example, they have drawn the world's attention to many human tragedies such as starving refugees and children, prize of wars or the repercussions of AIDS epidemic. Through their efforts, people have become more aware of what is going on around in the world. Support for humanitarian issues There is so much happening in the world today. Crises that are social, political, economic and environmental. Photojournalism contextualizes humanitarian issues the world continues to face today. It helps to mobilize opinion and action which can encourage public interest and activism. Photojournalism helps in getting support of people from around the world for the ongoing catastrophes being faced by millions every day.
give us an in-depth look at a person or issue. Photojournalists help illustrate information that informs people about local, state, national and international events. Often they work alongside reporters, but they also do photo documentaries that give an in-depth look at a person or issue. Some of the most memorable events in modern history have been documented by photojournalists. As photojournalists, you should aim to represent the truth. However, truth is very subjective. What is expected of you is to be objective. So how does one get an objective view? To provide an objective view, you need to distance yourself from the situation. However, at the same time, you should spend some time to be able to relate to the people or the issue. Qualities like sensitivity, compassion and empathy are necessary to earn people's trust. This helps in making photographs that are more compelling and closer to truth. Such photographs will be without judgment and personal biases. Valuable resource for anthropologists. News reportage is usually done within a limited time frame. When one aims at doing a long-term project, one experiences the event or community as a participant observer. Here, you would engage with a particular project in order to bring out the underlying human spirit. This is a valuable resource for anthropologists to whom these photographs would later become materials for study. Significance of photojournalism As we have discussed, photographs have a strong influence over people. So far, we have been talking about photojournalism as one field. Now we look at the various specializations within photojournalism, which cover a wide range of subjects and situations. Nearly every aspect of human life and strife has been explored through the following types of photojournalism. Spot News Photojournalism This covers events that make day-to-day -day news like political events, crime, accidents, etc. This is in fact the most common type of photojournalism that demands alertness and knows for news. Spot News Photojournalists work with newspapers, news agencies and news websites and meet daily deadlines. War photojournalism. This is the earliest form of photojournalism where photojournalists have covered wars from the center of action. Reportage from conflict zones are censored by governments and require special training and equipment for photojournalists. In India, we see a lot of photographs in newspapers of conflicts within the country, such as an act of terrorism or riots. Sports. As sports events are a big part of news, there are photojournalists who specialize in photographing sports. This is also because sports photography requires specialized skills as well as equipment. Nowadays, there are photojournalists who excel in photographing a particular sport. Glamour Film stars and other famous personalities have become a major part of news coverage as most people want to peep into the lives of the rich and famous. The photojournalists who specialize in this kind of photography are called the paparazzi. Travel A booming tourism industry has given birth to travel photojournalism. It showcases travel destinations, landscapes, people cultures, customs and history. Most newspapers have a travel supplement. They are dedicated travel magazines including in-flight magazines and websites. All of these accept photographs taken by professionals or even amateurs. Environment the environmental photojournalism draws attention to the human exploitation of the environment and advocates balanced use of natural resources. In the last few decades, rapid development has resulted in severe environmental degradation.
environmental photojournalists look at problems caused by developmental projects and exploitation of natural resources that result in depleting forest covers, increasing human-wildlife conflicts, species extinction, the tribal community losing land, and urban population facing alarming levels of population. We have an increasing number of exclusive environmental magazines and websites. Citizen Journalism With the availability of affordable cameras, electronic equipment and the internet, an increasing number of people are becoming photojournalists. Most camera and mobile phones can take still photographs and videos. This enables anybody to report from where they are to the rest of the world. Many magazines, websites and television channels are providing space for citizen journalists. Photography is a powerful tool that helps us to transcend languages and communicate with people across borders and cultures. Photography freezes time, space and people for posterity and becomes a valuable repository of images for historians. Thus, it has played an important role in enabling millions of people to visually experience the high and low points of our human history. Photojournalism is not just the process of taking photographs. It is a combination of photographs and journalism. And hence, it comes with a sense of journalistic responsibility to document events as they happen. The journalistic principles of being accurate, truthful and unbiased apply for photojournalism too. Photojournalists present stories through their photographs, which can also support a written news story. Anybody can become a photojournalist if they have the aptitude and a camera. To begin with, you can also use your mobile phone cameras. As a photojournalist, you have the potential to explore your creativity and involve in work which is not monotonous. You get to meet and be in touch with different types of people. You should always be alert and aware of what is happening around you and how you can make a good story out of it with your camera. Hope you enjoyed the session as well as learned what is photojournalism. That is all for today. Thanks and goodbye.